Mia, what are we doing? We're doing new show. New show, schmoo show. We have a fun tester today. We are pulling one from our elite path. This is on 117 2022 It is a true tester. From zero to two minutes, you will do two rope climbs and four squat clean thrusters at 165, 115. Real quick, for the thruster, it's a true thruster. You cannot push jerk those, just keep that in mind. Two to four minute mark will be three rope climbs, six clusters. Four to six will be four rope climbs, eight clusters. Six to eight will be five and 10. And then you will continue on until you cannot do any more reps. The time, or excuse me, the, uh, what is it called, time Chris? Cap? No, not the time cap. What is it called when you tie someone? The tie break. That's what I was thinking tie of. Break. The tie break. No one wrote, Mia didn't write it here. So that's why I made a mistake. And it's been a long day. It's your fault. <laughs> it's, it's Mia's fault today. <laughs> The tie break for this will be the amount of reps that you get in the last round that you finish. So just keep that in mind. Try to push that last round, really see how deep you can get into this. Obviously, rope climb efficiency and being able to squat clean 165 or 115 is what it's all about. We're going to go see four guys demo this workout. All right, we're back, my friends. We have four gentlemen doing this, all of them going to Wadapalooza, so they're prepping for this with a tester today. They'll start on the rope, and then they'll move to their barbells. Gentlemen, we ready? Yes, sir. All right, 10 seconds. Five, three, two, one, and go. This first interval will be pretty doable for anybody that's in our program that's been practicing with rope climbs or any of the strength work. Um, you have two minutes to do it. Everyone's going to be able to get through this. The question is, how well can you do under fatigue in even the second, third, fourth interval? After that, I mean, it's going to be really tough. Only elite level athletes are going to get through to that fifth interval. So 20 seconds in, they're all off the rope, and then they're going to start their squat clean thrusters. For most athletes, I would say, be very conservative to start this. You don't need to bank any time. You're gonna get plenty of rest in this first interval. Don't get your heart rate where you're just feeling like you're, it's uncontrollable going into that second interval. Make sure that you feel comfortable with it and that you're kind of trying to get into a true resting posture in between the interval. So everyone finished, or three gentlemen finished at 43 seconds. Brooks finishes at 49 seconds. So they'll have about a minute 10 to a minute 17 rest. I'm gonna come over here and sit next to Mike and talk to him. Hey what, it, so you have an athlete doing this. What would you say? Obviously, that first minute is pretty easy. What's the strategy? What are the tips? Because it's gonna get dense fast. Yeah. I think it just depends on the person, but some people like to move fast and just get a lot of rest. Some people like to move slow and just kind of like keep the same pace throughout. Um, Hannes is someone that just like, he's very technical and he's a good mover, he has good position. So I'm just telling him like, just move at the speed you want to that feels comfortable. And then you, you kind of know looking at this that there's gonna be like three rounds that are definitely doable. And then there's like one or two rounds that we call them the oh shit rounds. We're like one of them, you have to sell out to make it pass into the next one. So just kind of like prepare yourself for that one round as the volume increases to just go as hard as you can on that round, sell out, get past it. And then the, whatever that bonus round is you make after it, you're just hanging on. So they have 15, yeah, it's three rope climbs and now six clusters, they have 10 seconds. Just like Mike said, this is very similar to any kind of like death by workout where there's that last round that you have to get through that's just like, do I have the willingness to hurt? It's called an, it's called an oh shit round. All right, so they're starting three rope climbs. Uh, all, all of them are really good at rope climbs. One person I would point out in particular, Kyle Ruth always does a really good job of getting up the rope quickly and then back down. He actually is going at a little, uh, what I would call his steady pace, almost like a comfortable pace right now. You'll see when he gets into uh, the deeper rounds, he's gonna speed up his rope climbs, kind of like what Jake did. Mike mentioned that some people like to kind of find a sustainable pace. Jake Berman in the white shirt in the middle between Kyle and Brooks, he's one of those athletes where he's just like super, super gifted, but he likes to find a nice, smooth, comfortable pace and kind of stay at that. One example is he did a workout with me where it was an e -mom and tell failure of 20 cal row on one minute, 20 burpees on another. And I know that sounds crazy, but he almost got to 30 total minutes on that workout, but he was finishing each set at like 55 to 57 seconds. Whereas for me, I'm like, man, I'm gonna go at as fast as I can and try to finish at 40 seconds in the row so that I have rest. He was really sustainable. And that's one way to train. Obviously, you need to be good at both because the sport requires both. But it's just kind of something to think about when you're doing workouts like this. Four and six now. 
Four, so this next set will be four and eight, four rope climbs and eight clusters. They finish that all around the 105 mark. Still plenty of rest time. This one is going to be challenging for Brooks. As you see, he's still finishing up his clusters. That was his last one. Brooks has really good rope climbs. He's really good with the body weight movements, but he's not as strong as these other guys. Whereas like Jake just PR his clean and jerk at 340. Kyle's clean and jerk is probably around that same. What's Hannes' clean and jerk, do you know? Like 320, 325. Yeah. So they're a little bit stronger, better squatters. Brooks is young and, and not quite as strong. So you're going to notice that it's going to be a little bit harder for him to get through the clusters, but he's just as good as at the rope climbs. All right, so this is four rope climbs, eight clusters. This is interval number three. I think most of them will get through this one. And go! I bet if we watched Jake and Kyle, they're gonna speed up their rope climbs just a little bit. Yep, you can already see Kyle's a little bit faster on the way up. He knows that you wanna bank some time on what you're good at. For Kyle, he's good at both of these movements, but his rope climbs especially are world class. He's actually done some stuff in the classroom on rope climb technique. If you are interested or do, are not good at rope climbs, go to our classroom, go to trainingthinking.com, and then click on classroom and you can check those out. I mean, some really good tips and some information on how to do those well, how to do them faster, how to be more efficient. Jake gets off the rope slightly ahead of Kyle. He starts his uh, squat clean thrusters right away. 165 is the same load that they use in the 2011 open workout. So I think that this is a weight that you could expect to come out both in Wadapalooza or in the open. So just keep that in mind. But you'll notice the cadence difference now. Both Jake and Kyle are pulling the barbell into their shoulders and getting up as quickly as they can. And then they're taking one step or a half step back from the barbell and then right back into it. And I think that that's the way it has to be. You have to basically have those you know, one or two second breaks to start this work to get through this third and then especially the fourth interval, which we'll get into after this. I don't know how many reps there, uh, I think that, oh, that was the last one for Jake and then Kyle has one more. So Jake finished that in one minute and 10 seconds, still a 50 second rest break. He has plenty of time. I think he might go deeper than I thought he was going to. That looked pretty solid. All right, Kyle, I think this is his last rep. All right, so he got through at the 128 mark, so he'll only have 30 second rest break. This is where it gets tough, just like Mike was talking about. You know, if you have to spill over in this round, it really makes that, that next round with five rope climbs and 10 uh, clusters challenging. All right, so Hannes, I think he has maybe one or two more reps. Brooks, you can't see right now, he's behind. He just finished at the 47 mark, so he'll only have a few seconds rest. Okay. Hannes has 10 seconds. All right. Three, two, one, go. I think this is the round where most people are gonna get stuck. Five rope climbs into 10 clusters. I mean, that's just a lot of work. It's really dense. But if you know how good you are at rope climbs, how good you are at clusters, this may be the round that you're like, oh, it's gonna be tough. I'm gonna finish at you know, 150 or 155, but I know I can get through it. And then just grind out to that final piece in the fifth interval. So keep that in mind, kind of think of that in, in game plan for it. You wanna make sure that you just empty the tank on that, whatever round that is for you so that you can get into that next round and then accumulate as many reps as possible. On the leaderboard in something like the open or the stage two qualifier, uh, or in semifinals, getting into that next round can mean a ton. So keep that in mind. All right, Kyle is, I believe, on his fourth rope climb. Jake finished all five rope climbs at 40, probably 42 seconds. I missed when he came down, but that's really, really impressive. Uh, that's fast for how many rope climbs they've already done. And you can see his cadence is really good. Just watching Jake, that was a three-second break in his first one, another three-second break. So now he's three second, or three reps in. He just looked back at the clock, which is smart, knowing how hard he has to push. If he doesn't have to go all out, then he should pull back a little bit and save some for this next interval. He, he probably has enough where he could do one more full interval and then maybe he fails in that, that seventh one or sixth one, whichever interval that would be. All right. So both Brooks and Kyle are on the clusters. Jake keeps looking back. He's trying to figure out how much time he has. If I were Jake, I would tell him to turn the other way next time so that he can watch the clock as opposed to turning it around. Those are the little things in the open you can do because it's in your gym. If you're at semifinals, you won't be able to see a clock. So, or if you do, you may have to turn around. That just is what it is. Just keep that in mind. All right, so Jake finishes at the 49 second mark. I don't know if any of these other gentlemen are going to finish. Jake, you got five seconds. Three, two, one, go. All right, so everyone else is capped in that fourth okay. interval. I believe it was the fourth interval. Jake is now on. It is uh, 
climbs. Six rope climbs in 12 clusters. Come on, Jake. This one's going to be a grind here, but the tie break is how many reps you get in your last round. So keep that in mind. I was just going to say, focus on Jake's pulling technique. So one thing that I like he does, he, uh, that he does, when he jumps and grabs with his hands, his feet quickly get on the rope and, and push into the rope. They don't push down. They push kind of out and away a little bit. But the big thing there is he's reducing his time under tension. He's not jumping, grabbing the rope, hanging for a second, finding his feet. He is like quickly getting his foot clamp on, and that makes a huge difference. Doesn't even matter how many pulls he's doing. He's doing it really quick, and I think that's uh, more effective than focusing on being like, I got to get two really long pulls in. Yeah, that's a really good point. The one thing I would critique is if he could get his feet, he could do the same speed by still pulling his knees up a little bit faster and then clamping, then that reduces the pull. But like Mike said, you don't have to do long pulls because long pulls sometimes mean literally long in time or more time, and that's more time under tension, which obviously is going to fatigue you. So think about still getting leaning back, clamping fast, and then locking your feet in. So that was about a minute and 18 seconds to do the six rope climbs, and uh, he'll have... He grabs a barbell at 23 seconds, so we'll have 37 seconds to do the 12 thrusters, or clusters, I should say. It's gonna be really tough to be able to do 12 in that time, but let's see how far he can get. Jake would, I mean, if this, if this is Wadapalooza, Jake's gonna do either some touch and go reps to finish or touch and go reps to start this set because he knows that he's racing everyone. Right now, he beat everybody. It's mentally hard to push yourself towards the end of this. Obviously, the camera's in his face, but still, I think competition always brings the best out of every single person, or at least it should. Five seconds left. Three, two, one, and time. Great finish by Jake. Great finish. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was nasty. Kyle had a little bit of a break, so I'm just going to come over and talk to him. Your rope climbs look really solid all the way through, but that last set, when I think you were, were you on fives, so the yeah, the set of five. the set of five, you had to take a little bit longer breaks in between. Was it just like overall fatigue, grip, lat, something else? Yeah, my breathing spiked on the previous round, cycling the barbell, and then there was not enough time to recover in that two minute window. And so by the time I got back to the the rope climbs, I was just so out of breath. It was like. If I climb faster, it's gonna blow up. What advice would you give someone that is probably, let's say the same level as you, but that really wants to get into that next round where Jake was, is there a pacing strategy that you would change? So I hit three more, I needed three more thrusters, which is like 20 seconds at the pace I was going. So honestly, you just would have had to have been more disciplined with the rope climbs on that last set. I was just, I was hurting. So I took advantage of the fact that I'm pretty good at them and took some rest to try and calm down. I don't think it worked out. Yeah, there are definitely ways that he, Kyle could have gotten to that next round, but this is one of those workouts where if it's in the open, you do it, or let's just say the stage two where you're really trying to make semifinals, you would do it once, figure out your pacing, and then do it a second time, and that's why you would, you would always do better that second time because you would know how, how fast you need to go on the rope climbs. Let's go over and talk to Jake real quick. He crushed that, if he can talk. Hey, do you have enough breath to speak to us? Yeah. Let's sit down yeah, with Jake. <laughs> when you got to the barbell in that last set, was it more, I know I can't finish, so I'm just going to get as many reps, or did you think you could finish those? No, yeah, I knew, like, starting the last set of rope climbs that there was no way I was getting 12. What did I get, like, six or seven? I don't know what the rep was. Yeah. I would have had to TNG, and that was not happening. On, on the clusters, it was just arms or just, like, general body fatigue? I mean, arms, but it wasn't a limiter. It was just, like, whole body, just kind of all the reps, high turnover. So most like it was more reps. The rest was getting shorter. It was just all compounding. So most athletes are not going to get anywhere near where Jake was. But for those that are competitive, a high level. I mean, Jake is essentially a games athlete. Where do you think that someone could improve, or where would you improve if you did this again? Well, I don't even know how I would game it. It's in my mind at first. I was like, maybe go slow in the beginning. But I'd rather just have the rest of doing nothing. But you know. The rope, like, I feel like I did the rope climbs well. A lot of people think like they need to do as le the least amount of pulls as possible, but I'm a big believer in just warming up the rope and using the least amount of energy and sliding down really fast. Yeah, the eccentric on the rope or just going down on the, the descent is probably a better way to put it, yeah. is definitely more important for most people that are already technically right. good on the rope climb. Yeah. So what Jake is saying there is basically, and Mike mentioned this, you wanna be able to find the most efficient pull technique 
with minimal time under tension. You don't want to be hanging on to the rope. The only critique that I, and I mentioned this in the video that I'd give Jake, is maybe trying to drive his knees up a little bit faster so that he could reduce a half yeah. pull. But other than that, his rope climbs were faster than everyone else's, but it's something to think about. For the clusters, any other way, would you try to touch and go any of the reps? Would it still say, would that ruin you, all singles? Any advice for anybody? So, well, I'm a hip cleaner most of the time, but I can do it both where I have straight arms and hit off my thigh. And I think the having my arms contracted to hit in the hip pocket fatigued my arms a little more. Like I felt my biceps. So maybe I'd play around with my, the width, uh, you know, how wide my hands are on the clean and go thigh. So my arms are straight and more lax. So I'm not like tense the whole time. So whether, you know, however you clean, maybe mess around with that. But if we were allowed to uh, squat clean and jerk, I would definitely utilize the jerk. The, the bush rose is getting kind of tired, but no, it wasn't too bad. It was, yeah. ran out of time. Yeah, Jake was push jerking in his warm up, and then I was like, no, 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 sir, you can't do that. Definitely makes it a little bit easier. Uh, great job by Jake and the rest of the guys. That's the new show for this week. We'll see you again next week, my friends. It's new show. It's new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows. It's new show.